Mr. Maxwell, you know what scientists do? Work. They like to collect data. And there's many ways to communicate data. And one of the ways that we communicate data is through graphing. Which is, that's why we have the graph paper. So graphing is a, is a visual way to communicate. But what, no matter what kind of graph you use, whether it's a pie graph or a bar graph or a line graph, they all basically have the same principles. All right? Well, they all have numbers of some sort. Right. And, and they have data that they're trying to convey. Okay, so uh, in a pie graph, you're going to show percentages. Here, for instance, I'm talking about student grades. I know it's about student grades because I have a title on there that says student grades. And I can see that the pie is divided up into 48%, 14%, 30%, 8%, but I forgot to write down what the grades were. <laughs> see, it's important to have labels. Okay, so 48% of of what? Okay, third set of what? So without labels, you know, that graph means nothing. Okay, so that's one of those things you have to make sure you include. So when you double check your work, make sure you have labels. That's why we have the acronym TAILS. You know, we're not telling stories, we're not talking about that kind of TAILS, or anything that's, well, I don't have a TAIL. Okay, T A I L S. L, labels. So you label. Okay, so uh, back to uh, the graphs. Here's a bar graph. Uh, here's a line graph. Now some people will say the line graph is a connect the dot graph, and it's not really. So in a bar graph or in line graph, you always have to have two uh, axes. There's the X axis on the horizontal. X marks the spot. On the ground. And the y axis on the um, uh, vertical. So y, reach for the sky, that's how you remember the y axis. Here on the x axis is where we put our independent variables, or iv as I'll call it. And here on the y axis is where we put the dependent variables. And if you recall that little poem, the iv is controlled by me. Mr. Maxwell? The DV is the results I see. There you go. Mr. Douglas, please call the main office. Okay, so a bar graph is commonly used to show comparison. A line graph is progression. So here in this line graph, uh, we have Days one, two, three, four, and five. We're trying to show the number of correct facts in a five-day period. Here we have the number of correct facts, and you notice the intervals are five, ten, fifteen, twenty. We can't go five, seven, ten, eleven, one hundred and fifty, and so on. So when you try to figure out your intervals, you have to look at your data. What's the smallest? What's the largest so that everything fits in here nice and neatly? You'll notice I used almost all of the space here to uh, do my graph. We don't bunch things up. We plan ahead. It's always good to do it in pencil lightly, and then if you want to go over it darker with a darker pen, you can do that. But if you do it with a dark pen at first, then you're going to make mistakes. You're going to cross out, white out, and it's going to look ugly. It's got to look good. Uh, you'll notice I uh, leave a little space off on the, the side on the uh, uh, x-axis and a little space up here on the y-axis too. That's all part of the spacing. Uh, when I do the bar graphs, I always make sure that there's a space in between the bars. Sometimes students will bunch all the bars together and that looks ugly. And what an important thing. You see there's one space, one space, one space. You then have to make sure you have one space to start with. If you're going to have two spaces in between each, you then have to start with two spaces, have your bars two spaces. If your bars are going to be like two boxes in width, every bar must be two boxes in width. Okay, you must be consistent with every single bar so that way it doesn't skew the way that it looks. Okay, you don't want to skew the data. Now sometimes the data doesn't come out exactly on 
your intervals. For instance, Bill's IQ is 110. Clearly, it's between 100 and 120. So I like my students to write 110, indicating that's what they're talking about. Here on this uh, line graph, uh, we've got three facts uh, correct on day one. Well, that's between zero and five, so that the reader doesn't have to say, wonder what that dot is. You help the reader out by putting three. This is four, 12, and obviously 15 and 15. Now, one thing you notice, again, he's got with one, okay, from zero to one. Okay, that's... And then skip space two, skip space three, skip space four. Every space is worth the same. Okay? When you set up your graphs for the lab, okay, you can't just say, okay, 0.7 mass and then you skip two spaces and make it a mass of 30 grams. You can't do that. It's got to be spaced out perfectly. So 0.7 grams might be down here and your 30 grams might be here. That's okay. It has to do from the zero to whatever your greatest value is. And all those fit in accordingly to where they should be. And the same goes for your y-axis. So in conclusion. Tails. Always have a title. The title has to have some kind of relationship between the IV and the DV. Look at this one here. The number of correct facts. Over, uh, excuse me, over a certain uh, five-day period. You see how the title shows the connection between the two. The title isn't, uh, um, I don't know, interesting facts or interesting yeah. numbers. Or just even number of fa correct facts. Yeah. You have to have some kind of time frame here. A, the axes. Are the axes labeled? Okay. The I, the intervals, that spacing. Is it done correctly? Okay, the L is part of that labeling as well. You know, here, through the axes, you know, the 0, 5, 10, all the numbers, label, time, in days. Tell us the unit. Okay, the unit is put in parentheses. Like Mr. Maxwell said on the last uh, video, you can't leave naked numbers. It's the same thing in graphs. You can't just have numbers there. What do these numbers mean to the reader? You have to imagine the reader has no clue what it is that you're trying to show them. And the S is for spacing. It's that spacing piece where you start at zero, start to go here, you know, is it adequately spaced? Is there a lot of room left over or is it really bunched up? Where That spacing piece that like Mr. Reynolds talked about. You know, you want to use as much of the graph as possible because by spreading it out and really showing that change, okay, now your graph really has purpose and it is meaningful because you can make sense of it all. And lastly, notice the colors. This is something that's going to make the reader say, hey, I'm more interested. What's going on here? So you don't want to have this, like, just black and white, just pencil. You want to introduce color if you can. Okay. And th that is graphing. And these are the expectations for when you do your graph for Friday.